This video is brought to you in part by True Tech Tools, quality tools, essential support. All right, guys, so I just drove an hour to get here, and that's country driving, doing 60 to 70 mile an hour. I have a feeling this grocery store has got a leak. So we're gonna calibrate outside here and see if we can find something. I just uh, got looking at the history there and it looks like one case, two cases that were getting warm. It appears that, you know, maybe it froze up, but they just unloaded it and said, we'll just wait till Monday. Well, another case is going down too. So let's go take a look and see what's going on. All right, got nothing in the store. We're gonna go to EPM because I got a little hit as soon as I opened up the door. Definitely high for being out in the middle of the room. Oh. Look at that, see how it got higher? What happened here? Yeah, it's looking a little shady, huh? See that oil? See the oil on the cobwebs? I'd say our spray pattern somewhere in there. Yeah, we're getting in there. Oh, yeah. All right, well, let's put the bag down. You can see we got all kinds of nasty crap everywhere. See if we can get in there and look at it. The store just finally got updated to E2s or E3, whatever. It's the online interface. I thought we had a leak, just wasn't in the right spot. But if it's back here, that's gonna be a nice, easy fix. See, we've got our 12-door freezer's warm and our dairy is warm. What's happened is those are the first two places that have gotten starved of refrigerant. That's kind of usually how it goes with these racks. Usually they'll start going down in sections a lot of times from what I've seen. You can see how this came out. And when it did that, that rubbed right into it. As soon as I move it, I can feel it hitting my hand, or I could a minute ago. So we're gonna need to shut this puppy down. That's on the discharge side. So we're gonna have to shut it down first. We'll isolate all the discharge valves up on top, and we'll isolate it here. That will allow us to rebraze that shut, and then we should be good. You can see that's why we lost so much oil, because it's coming right out of the compressor before it even hits the oil separator. So we run these really low, like 10, 20% on average. We don't put anything extra in there for this very reason. That way, if there's a leak, it doesn't run very long before it starts having problems. Now we can go through here and actually shut down the compressors, one, one, boom, boom, boom. Which will probably put in more alarms, but whatever. So I'm gonna go through here. I'm just gonna isolate suction. We may have some little takeoffs like that there that can leak back through. That, that's the kind of thing, man, it makes it difficult. We might be better off just to do the whole thing, but isolated there. Oil level, that's nice and low now, that's great. Smooth jaws, they're not channel locks. We're gonna go ahead and go through here. You guys know how to close a valve, so I'm not gonna record that. So we're gonna go through discharge closed, which that'll isolate us. So for the most part, we have four valves to close. So we'll get these all cranked in, and then we can go ahead and start our repair. Everything's in a positive pressure, so we don't have to really pull no uh, vacuums or anything like that, but we can if we want. Repair, like I said, is gonna be right there. It rubbed right through. I think you're gonna, yeah, that's gonna be pretty easy to see. I've had this happen once before at another store. So it does happen, unfortunately. Here's why you don't use a cotton pick and crescent wrench on this. See how it's not turning anything? Some jackass decided to round it off because he was too lazy to get his freaking refrigeration wrench out. So that one's screwed now. You had to get on there with channel locks or whatever and freaking crank it in because some idiot didn't get out his wrench. Get our 
long quarter inch hose so we can refill it. I just got my new torch handle, which is kind of nice. I've had rosebud tips for a long time that I can't use because I have a Victor torch set, but I just finally got me a UniWeld handle. So now I've got a rosebud that I can do up to two and a three quarters, I think, with this one, and I have another one I'll do up to six inch and uh, still be able to run it with a little set like that. So talk to the manager. Gonna get a little kitty litter. We'll use that to get rid of the oil, which he's gonna just take that out of inventory. So we got that there waiting for us. Gonna get some oil, which gonna take every bit of that. Definitely gotta watch oxygen levels in the room. The fan is on. I can feel, I feel lightheaded already. So we gotta watch that. You don't wanna deplete your oxygen to the point where it ends up making you sick or dead. A little bit of big blue. Not sure if old Joe Shear watches these ones or not, but Joe, there's your gauges, man. They're sitting there when I need them for the higher pressures, and I got my old beaters here. There we go. What originally happened is we had to unload this one and this one right here, but then when the other one went down, that's when we knew we had issues. This weather's been swinging cold to hot, so it's hard to watch trends to really see your head go up and down, stuff like that, because it's just really hard to tell. There's some more refrigerant. I have to find out which one it is. Hopefully it's the one I got the most of. And our compressor room is conveniently located right up here and over to there. So we got the cat litter spread out so we can work without being in the oil and tracking that throughout the store. Good there on that. Just got our bracket out. You can see where it's been vibrating for a while. So we're gonna end up filling that in. I'm not gonna try chopping out a piece of copper and putting that back in. That's mainly just in this one spot right here and right there. So a little skin coat across the top, we should be fine. I gotta clean that up with my wire brush. Right there is where it finally ate through. That little pinhole on the discharge took this whole rack down. Now, if they had refrigerant alarms in here, they might have caught that. Now, what I did do is turn the exhaust fan on, which the exhaust fan just ran on a generic little thermostat over there on the wall. So we're pulling nice fresh air in here to help air this out. Everything stopped leaking. I don't, I don't feel anything coming out, so we should be good there on that. I don't know if we got a port that we could actually pull on it or not. Honestly, oxygen is not getting in there very easily. A system this big, the real world, we can go ahead and lie to you and tell you everything gets done exactly a certain way, but it just don't happen. Yeah, there's no isolation ports on this side to do that on. All right, we're gonna see if we can get that in. Here. Be careful we don't catch this oil on fire, which we got oil everywhere. That'll help keep some of the oil from catching on fire. Yeah, it's hillbilly, I know. But we got freezer racks down. We ain't got time for a lot of fancy talk. You gotta watch those rocks so you don't want them catching on fire or popping your eyeball. Yeah, I think I'm gonna go ahead and drill a hole, put a cap in. That way we can relieve any pressure. Otherwise, it's gonna fight me a little bit, but we got the majority of it right there. All right, so what I'm gonna do is get a little stem there. I'm gonna drill the copper, put that on there, and then that'll give us a place to relieve the little bit of pressure that's still in the pipe. As you can see, to couple that would be very, very difficult. You'd, well, wouldn't be very, very difficult. Here we go, got that. Got this little gizmo for my impact. Makes it a little easier. It's the brush wheel. Got it uh, cleaned up. Go ahead and drill this out and then we'll braze that piece back in there. This will give us a relief. So see all those ships that you see? They're still not, still not through yet. So there we go. That'll fit right in there like that. We'll go ahead and leave that out until we're done. 
just gonna hit that up one more time, build that up, build a bridge on it. For the most part, we got this completely sealed. I want to make sure I don't have any other spots that may have been kicking back out at me when I was trying to seal it up. Kind of just walking it right along like you're welding with a regular TIG welder or whatever. That way it keeps it filled up. That's the same diameter of the pipe. So we've laid a bead across that. Just use your heat to pull it around. Some people may disagree with that, but so on this piece here, I like to put it about a quarter of an inch in maybe. That way, when the alloy flows in there, I not only have built a bridge around the top here, but I also have it pull down into the bottom. We'll just put our heat mainly on our big pipe, add a little bit at the top and work our way around there. So I literally got my phone hanging on my porch. My smaller one and then I got the captain hook I have all these cool heads that I've been trying to use with my Victor torch handle I sent them back to uh, UniWeld and said hey these don't work they're supposed to work with it oh yeah they work with it guess what they don't I was getting backfire and everything with that thing I'm not I'm not getting none of that no more there really was no good way other than to cut it back here and then do it in or unbraise it here and then you're dealing with all that you gotta remember guys it's a frozen rack so I ain't got all day to screw around luckily it ain't a bunch down but it's Sunday and I want to get this thing done. Just got to finish cleaning some of this crap out that we got in there. Let a little bit of refrigerant pressure through. We'll leak check real quick, make sure that's holding. So that right there, there's 132 pounds of pressure. Pile that back off. Yeah, see how that cat litter's working perfect. Keeping the crap out of your off your shoes okay no leaks there you can see that I literally built that up to the same height that's what the pipe was Don't see nothing leaking there on that either all my valves here are still open. I gotta open all my suctions and then we can start recharging this and we gotta add some oil to this thing too. Gotta make dang sure we open up that hot gas again. That's some pressure. There you go. You guys have no idea how excited I am about that stupid torch head working like it should. Huh. I mean, it's so stupid that uh, it's not even something you really even think is that big of a deal, but I literally have had that head for two years, maybe four years, I don't know. I tried using it several times and it just would not would not work. We got one last one here. It's awesome with these pliers, even though that's backwards, it has the strength to do it because it has such down pressure. See somebody else did the same thing I did here that one there because they must have had to do a relief in between there or actually so you can pressure check uh actually you got pressure ports up there on top too this is your three-way valve 
So you got normal condenser, reheat, and normal condenser. So for winter time, and you get free heat out of it. On my oil levels in my cans. Can't see on any of them except for that one. It looks like it ain't too bad. Hard to tell. We're gonna pump some in this thing though. Maybe half a gallon. And then we can turn the compressors back on. So we got one little compressor on. Two on. Three on. Four on. Just got AZ50 there. We should be able to also come over here to the home screen, see what refrigerant we got. 507. I think all these are except for maybe that one there. Nope, it's 50 also. 407F. I know. All right, on mine here, I actually have an O-ring in there from one of my ice cream things. Literally screws right on there. Then we'll charge liquid. Probably end up taking, I bet you two of those at least. Now I've got a ball valve on my, so I think it's a, it's either a 50 or 100 foot, 75 foot, I forget what it is. Now I wound this in a certain way that this should unwind straight with no kinks an over under approach which is something you do with your electrical cords and as you can see it just drags right out no problem now we'll go ahead and bleed her out and then we'll be good to go okay good deal the only place to tie on this for the suction side is right there above the sort valve I don't see anything other than right here that we could go. So we'll see how that does. If not, we could always go to that one down there. If it never fails, you'll lose those little guys. But you can see the hose just goes all the way over and across. A lot easier than trying to carry that thing up here. Got to add some oil yet to this thing. Looks like it's still full. I just want to get it back into the reservoir there our line out here a little bit. Get any old oil out, any air out. There we go. We can't just shoot it right into the oil filter here. Believe it or not, our oil level is actually not bad. I'm going to dump just this half a gallon in there. I know what's on the floor didn't help it none to not have it. And then uh, we'll probably call it good. That one there's empty. On goes the next one. It was a fair. I had a little bit of uh, graze overrun, so I had to trim a little bit of that off. Didn't think about that when I was doing it, but not a big deal. Got the new clamp in there. Got it squeezed on top and bottom so everything's equal. There's no vibration now at all. Um, those are rated for 190 degrees and on average, you know, that's about the ballpark of where it's at. But we have no vibration, really nothing major anyhow there. I'm gonna go ahead and maybe tighten up some of those. Uh, this one over here, they've already taken it off so it must have been something wrong there, but they're clamped right here on the side of that. We're at 10% right now. Our temperatures have all started to come down finally. Our top one there is the one that was the warmest and it's already at 14. So we go in there and take a peek a poo. So we got 21, eight and 12. So those are the three sensors inside that case. And uh, so far so good. You can see uh, trap wise, how everything went to crap and now looks a lot better. Another easier way is to go in to look at your log. There's your temperatures as you're dropping. Get your page down. You can see when things really started getting bad. Now, like I said last night, manager said, hey, I already pulled the case, just need you to shut the alarm off. Went ahead and set it to a higher. He didn't have no food in there. I said, well, I'm only gonna set it so high. I only set it at 40. Normally it's at 20 and it ended up going higher and higher. Well, that's why I did it. So it triggered alarm again, and that's when we knew something wasn't right. 
Uh, couldn't tell remotely how much refrigerant's in there. They don't have that sensor on here. This is an old control system that was uh, actually not even control. Uh, I forget who, with the Kaiser Warren old fashioned thing there. I mean, some of these stores I've got are just really antiquated. So this stuff here was just redone in the last uh, year or two. And uh, we just don't have, you know, all the goodies on it. Oil levels up. I had it all the way up to the top bowl. It's already dropped some, so it's already equalized things out a little bit. That one there, I can see bubbles a little bit in there, so it's got oil. All these side glasses are really dirty. Hard to tell on that one. And it's got it in that one there. That one's got cracked glass or whatever. Uh, Orphan Annie is what it kind of reminds you of. All the rest of them, we're going to take a look at those, make sure they're okay. See, if it wasn't for the digital one there, you wouldn't even know what was in it. That one's next to nothing. It's a 10%. That's 407F. See, that don't show anything. But it's hot gas defrost. So, reclaim lockouts on. Let's look at our circuits. Dirty hands, clean money. So like I said, we don't get too too crazy on how much we keep in it. All right, so I shut these two compressors down so I could go over it again, just to make certain I don't have any leaks that I may have missed with the bubbles or since I put it together. And we are good to go there. Nothing on any of that. Check all my fittings that I did. Good. Going back over, making certain I don't have anything else that would have been covered up by that last leak. Nothing worse than being out here and if somebody comes back the next day that you missed something. Some of the other racks down here just to make sure there ain't nothing up here. It's easy we can get while we're here. And then uh, we'll wrap this thing up. Oh, cut this one in. All right, guys, look at this one. There would be your next problem right there. Yep, I'm trying to get that fixed, but I ain't gonna record that. I'm kind of looking at the rest of these here, make sure they're okay. Look at that one there. Somebody had to do something very similar, that's not mine. All right, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. I know a lot of you don't really like the bigger stuff like this, because you don't get to see it very often, but for me, I always enjoyed it, and it's something that I kind of enjoy doing, so if you guys enjoyed the video, if you would, leave a comment down below, hit the thumbs button, don't forget to subscribe. And uh, until next time, guys, we'll catch you on the next one. Later.